Hey everybody, what is going on? This is Anthony with the VR Game Rankings YouTube channel, and this isn't the daily vlog series, and it's not even the weekend wrap-up. Instead, this is just a video where I'm going to be covering two very specific VR topics. And, you know, I was supposed to have a video up yesterday. Yesterday was Saturday. That was the day I was supposed to bang out a video. I tried, I really tried. I tried like five, six, seven different times, tried to record a video and I kept having problems with my camera. Some kind of weird thing kept happening, but you know what? I thought, okay, it's Sunday, let me try again today. So basically what I wanted to talk about today, there's really two major topics I wanted to talk about. Number one, I want to talk about Apple because Apple, the rumors are that Apple is going to be getting into the AR VR game sometime in the year 2020 with a planned headset. And I want to talk about that. And then the other thing that I want to talk about is we are just days away from F8 from the big Facebook conference. And a lot of people believe that the Oculus Go is going to be launched at F8. It's going to be, you know, Zuckerberg's going to walk on stage, say, hey, it's officially available. But there also could be some type of surprise augmented reality type of announcement. And I want to get into that as well. So basically, those are the only two topics that I'll be covering on today's episode, but I'm going to get pretty deep on both of these. So hopefully it'll be relatively decent. Okay, so let's go ahead and start it off with Apple. Now, the main thing that we have to think about here when it comes to Apple is they are a sleeping giant. Okay, they are the absolute dominator in the smartphone market. And there's a lot of companies out there that missed the boat with smartphones. Obviously, Microsoft being one of the biggest companies that they just didn't get any of that smartphone pie. And there's a lot of other companies as well that wish they could get a little bit of what Apple has going on. And so a lot of these companies, they're actually looking to augmented reality and to virtual reality as the next possibility to try to get in on the ground floor for the next major technological advancement, the next big thing. What is the next smartphone? And a lot of people believe the next smartphone is actually going to be glasses that you are going to wear on your head, probably augmented reality glasses. And basically most of us, what we do with our smartphones, right? You're holding your smartphone. You're looking down at your smartphone. You're seeing what someone said on Twitter or you got an email or whatever it is, right? You're doing this. Well, in the future, the thought is instead of looking down like this, we're going to kind of be looking off into the distance because we're going to be wearing AR smart glasses that are going to be popping up all these different kinds of notifications. And there will also be entertainment options as well. So a lot of companies believe that this is how they're going to get in on this. In fact, I think if you go to Magic Leap, Magic Leap is pretty much betting the farm that basically the next era of the, the next smartphone thing is going to be augmented reality glasses that you're going to wear. Magic Leap, Magic Leap keeps talking about what they call spatial computing. And basically they envision this future where everyone is going to be wearing these Magic Leap goggles pretty much everywhere you go. It is going to be absolutely intrinsic to your normal daily life. And you're going to do everything with these headsets on. And that's kind of their long-term future. That's their long-term play. And Apple has to be well aware of this. They have to be well aware of the fact that there are a lot of companies out there that would love to eat their lunch. They would love to basically have what Apple has right now, but on this next level, this next wave. And Apple has to do what they can do to defend the throne. And that's basically what we're talking about here. So what is this new story? Well, it basically goes back to a CNET article by CNET writer Shara Tibkin, who is um, citing an unnamed source within Apple that has confirmed that there is going to be an AR slash 
VR headset that is going to be targeted for release in the year 2020. And not only is they, are they going to be bringing out this AR VR headset, but it is going to be a wireless headset and it's going to feature 8K resolution. And we're talking about legitimate 8K resolution, not Pimax, which is basically a 4K. This is legitimate 8K resolution to each eye, wireless, coming in 2020 by Apple. I mean, obviously, this would shake up our industry in major ways. And one of the interesting things about it, too, is we've heard Tim Cook comment a number of times about augmented reality. Tim Cook seems to be very bullish on augmented reality, but he hasn't said very much about virtual reality, and it didn't seem like Apple was very interested in virtual reality, but supposedly this device is AR and VR. It is actually both of them, and it will offer the opportunity to basically go either way. When you want to see your, your regular environment, but you want to have digital things overlaid over that environment, you're going to be able to do that. But when you want to completely close off the outside world and get into a hyper-realistic VR environment, you're going to be able to do that as well. So what are some of the details about this headset? Now, again, the thing that we have to understand here is this is predominantly speculation. We don't have any real concrete information. Shara Tibkin does have this unnamed source, but, you know, I could have an unnamed source too, and no one can basically say that I'm lying because it's an unnamed source. So we have to take all of this with a large grain of salt. However, I think it's pretty obvious that Apple has no other choice but to get into this game. If it's a defensive maneuver, I mean, regardless whether it's a defensive maneuver or whether they're really trying to stake a claim in this new future, Apple has to get involved. They have to protect the throne. They have to protect what they've already built. Everybody is coming in. They're trying to take what they already have. And Apple has to say, look, we need to sweep these competitors off to the side. We need to protect what we have here. So it is incredibly important that they come to the table with a seriously powerful technology and a seriously powerful design that really takes advantage of a lot of these features. So what are we talking about here? First of all, wireless, what does this mean? Well, one of the things that we have to understand here is you have wireless standalone units like the Oculus Santa Cruz and like Microsoft HoloLens, these things are standalone. You put them on your head, the GPU, the CPU power, it is all built into the unit and there are no wires. Everything is happening from inside the unit. Then you have someone else like Magic Leap where they're going with a very similar design, but they don't want to have this big, giant, bulky thing on your head. So what they thought was, huh, what can we do here? We don't want a big, gigantic, bulky eyeglass thing that is wearing you down. We want to take that GPU, that CPU, and we want to put it somewhere else. But what they've done is they've put it inside a hockey puck, maybe an oversized hockey puck size device that is going to clip on your belt or it's going to go over your shoulder or it's going to go in a backpack or something like that. And that is going to have the brains of Magic Leap 1. And by offloading all that computer processing power, by getting the GPU and the CPU off of there, number one, you don't have to worry about heat. That's a major, major part of it as well. But then it's the weight. One thing I've heard from people that have used HoloLens for an extended period of time is that it starts to weigh on you after a while. The HoloLens is not an incredibly lightweight device. It starts to get heavy and it starts to kind of wear on you. Now, we don't know what it's like with the Oculus Santa Cruz, but it's got to be somewhere in the same kind of uh, situation because you got to have battery packs. You got to have the power, the heat, all of that is built in. So Magic Leap, obviously, they went with this separated design. Now, Apple is going one step further. They don't want to have anything that's clipped on your belt. They don't want to have anything that is strapped over your shoulder or is in some type of backpack or purse or something like that. So what Apple is doing is they're going to have a processing box, some type of computer tower-like box 
that will be located somewhere in the room, but you will be completely wireless. You'll be able to walk around, you'll be able to do things, and you will have to stay within range of this processing box. But other than that, it's completely wireless. And so the, the big advantage here is they could have a relatively thin design, a relatively lightweight design. They can make it look kind of cool and look kind of stylish because they don't have to have that CPU and that GPU and everything else that is built inside of it. They just need the wireless transmission. Now, supposedly they're going to be using some incredibly advanced high-speed wireless transmission. We don't really know how that's going to work. And then the other question is, look, we're talking about 8K screens for each individual eye. Exactly how is Apple going to power this? Now, one thing we know about Apple, recently they've announced, or I'm not sure if this was announced or it just kind of leaked out, but Apple has basically kind of parted ways with Intel. They're not going to be using Intel processors in many of their future products. And basically, they're going to start creating their own chips in-house. They've bought some different companies. They've acquired some different companies. And they're going to try to create their own GPU, CPU kind of systems and create that in-house. And supposedly, it's going to be incredibly advanced and very powerful very efficient and not take up a lot of space. Of course, we would hear that whether or not that's true or not. You're always going to hear the brightest sides of things. But basically, that's what they're hoping is going to be in this processing box that will be located somewhere in your room. And so you'll be able to walk around kind of freely, be able to enjoy the benefits of this headset, but you are going to be limited. You're not going to be able to walk down the block or down the street, there's going to be a certain range with this. We just don't know what the range is yet. But going back to the 8K screens, how exactly are they going to get away with this? Well, eye tracking and foveated rendering is going to be a very big part of this. It has to be a very big part of this for this to be a 2020 product. Now, certainly one of the questions that we get to as well is pricing. And if you guys think HTC Vive has been getting expensive with their pricing for the HTC Vive Pro, we can only shudder to think about the cost of what Apple might charge for some kind of incredible headset. Now, 2020 sounds like it's somewhere off into the future, but remember, we're here in the year 2018. A year from now is 2019. Two years from now is 2020. So we're talking about only two years and a handful of months. I would have to assume that this device would come out sometime like September, October, November of 2020. So we're talking about two years and a handful of months. This has to be technology that can't necessarily be super pie in the sky. So it has to be something that they actually bring to the table here. And we're certainly excited about this. I mean, Apple, they are a sleeping giant. Some people don't feel like the industry is really going to get going until Apple makes their own play in the industry. And so we are excited about this because there's a lot of Apple fans out there that will buy almost anything Apple. And if Apple steps into the augmented reality realm, and especially if they're bringing VR as well, that's tremendously exciting for the entire VR AR community because it really helps establish VR and AR to the masses. That would be huge. Okay, so let's get into the next topic I wanted to talk about, which is F8, Facebook's conference. It is coming up on Tuesday. Like I said at the top of the show, we fully expect that Mark Zuckerberg is going to walk out on stage and he's going to say, Oculus Go, here it is, $199. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen, you can buy this right now. Go to Oculus.com. You can order this right now. Go to Amazon.com. Go to Target.com. Go to Best Buy. Go wherever it is available. It is out there for you. We are talking about the Oculus Go $199.99. So we fully expect that this will happen at F8. I predicted this months ago, and I said one of the main reasons I thought that Oculus was going to delay the Go until this time is because 
of the free press coverage. You cannot buy the kind of press coverage that they're going to get at F8 that basically comes for free. And so they want to take full and total advantage of the fact that a lot of other media companies will cover F8 that might not cover a conference about the Oculus Go by itself. So they're going to piggyback that. They're going to put that out there at F8 to generate more publicity, more widespread information. You talk about websites like USA Today, CNN, you know, all kinds of different websites are going to be covering F8 with no question about it, where they might not go to a more specific Oculus related conference. So that's kind of what's going on as far as Oculus Go is concerned. Now, really, the more exciting part about this whole F8 thing is the fact that, remember, there was a story a number of months back where a couple of different Oculus employees were talking about how at this conference, there was going to be a major announcement that would be basically the biggest announcement Oculus has ever made, period. Like bigger than the fact that they bought Oculus originally, bigger than the fact that they released the Oculus Rift, bigger than the fact that, you know, Oculus Go, that was a big announcement, bigger than Santa Cruz Prototype. Every announcement that Oculus has had, this is supposedly the biggest announcement of all of them. But even more importantly is in these tweets from two different uh, Oculus employees, Hugo Barra, and I forget the other guy, but these two guys, they both very, very, very specifically mentioned AR and VR, and they very specifically mentioned AR. They threw that AR in there, and I don't believe that was by accident. I believe the AR part of it was thrown in there for a very specific reason, and basically, I'm going to go off on a tangent right here and kind of do a pie in the sky uh, prediction of what I think might happen. Something that could be rather crazy and could really upset the entire Apple cart in the entire VR AR industry. And so basically I'm going to lay it out like this. Okay. So imagine for a minute that you're Mark Zuckerberg, you own the company Facebook, you are a billionaire. You're one of the most valuable. I mean, you you have one of the, the largest net worths of anyone on planet Earth. You're running this major corporation, Facebook. You believe that VR and AR is the future, period. And you believe it so much that you dropped $2 billion on the Oculus. You know, you originally acquired Oculus for $2 billion. You put your money where your mouth is. Now, let's say you're Mark Zuckerberg and you get a little farther into it and you start to think, you know what, man, VR is going to be huge, but you know what? AR is going to be even bigger. AR is going to be much bigger than VR in the grand scheme of things. I mean, just pretend that Mark Zuckerberg is thinking these kinds of thoughts. And so if he truly believes deep down inside that AR is going to be absolutely huge, well, then it, imagine that Mark Zuckerberg is sitting in his living room. He's watching the Recode conference where Ronnie Abovitz and Adam Silver, the, the head of the NBA, the commissioner of the NBA, they are there at this Recode conference and they're talking about Magic Leap One. And they're talking about this AR future and how Magic Leap One is the future and it's going to be incredible and it's going to be this breakthrough technology. Well, if you're Mark Zuckerberg and you're sitting here and you think, you know what, AR really is going to be the future. We're working on AR. We have labs. We have lots of people that we've hired. They're working on AR. We have to get involved in, in this product. We have to get involved in this industry. Then you have this other company, Magic Leap. They're about to drop a neutron bomb on this entire industry with a product release this year. They're gunning. Remember, we talked about Apple. Everybody wants to eat Apple's lunch. Magic Leap wants to eat Apple's lunch. Facebook wants to eat Apple's lunch. And so if you're Mark Zuckerberg and you have some secretive AR project that, it, that you're planning that is off into the future, but you have this new competitor that's about to launch something that is kind of very similar to what you're probably looking at, you know, you start to get nervous. You start to get a bit worried and you start thinking, 
man, this is concerning because you know what? This product is going to do a lot of things very, very well, and it's going to be available this year. And a lot of people are going to jump on this thing, but we don't want people to jump on that. We want people to jump on our product. So here's what I'm predicting, guys. Tuesday, May 1st, uh, F8, Facebook F8. I believe that they are going to announce a major augmented reality product, a freaking headset, like a legitimate AR headset with a name and all kinds of stuff. Now, it is not going to be released this year, not 2018. They might not even specifically say that it's 2019, but I think they're going to want to show off a headset. They're going to want to get really hyped about it. And they're going to say, look, Facebook is committed to an augmented reality future. We are going to have VR products. We are going to have AR products. It is all good. And they're going to show off uh, a brand new AR headset. This is going to be huge. It's going to be a bit confusing, though, to the general industry at large. I mean, it's going to cause a lot of confusion because there's so many different products here. But you know what? I really would understand the position that Facebook is in, the position that a lot of these other companies are in, because Magic Leap, Microsoft with HoloLens 2.0, you've got Project North Star coming from Leap Motion, you've got Avagon, you've got Meta 2. There's a lot of competitors in this space, and anybody can come along with a really high end AR headset and they could steal the thunder. And so I believe that. Facebook is going to have some kind of major augmented reality announcement that is going to be really huge. Now, a lot of people will postulate that this is just going to be some type of software thing that integrates with Facebook and works, works with phones, works with Apple phones and Android phones, and it's going to be something like that. And it's going to be kind of much ado about nothing, but I beg to differ. I think this is going to be something crazy. I think this is going to be something really out there and uh, I perfectly understand why it's going to happen. It is going to cause a lot of confusion. Obviously, I'm putting myself on blast with this prediction. Watch Tuesday will come and go. And it's a very minor little phone AR phone app that is much ado about nothing. And I'm completely wrong. And, and that could very well be the case. But I just thought it would be kind of fun to jump out ahead of time and give my thoughts on this. So basically, that's what I got for you guys today. So anyway, that's going to go ahead and do it for this show. And certainly I will be back in the coming days with some additional shows. Do not know exactly what course they're going to be taking. Although I will tell you this, guys, on May 1st, I'm definitely going to have a show about a particular game that I cannot stop playing. And you guys probably know the game that I'm talking about, and I will be talking about it quite a bit on May 1st. I'll have to bang out a special little episode that is dedicated 100% to this new VR game that has really captured my attention. So definitely stay tuned for that. All right, guys, I'll see you next time. Take it easy. Later. <laughs>